Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop. This is Greg here. Excuse my camera if it's moving. I don't have it mounted very solid tonight. I'm actually um, not in my workshop tonight. I'm someplace else. And um, what I'm planning on working on tonight is just a little special project. It's one that I, I did a few weeks ago. I didn't film it, but I'd created a power supply for my tablets and for my Google phone. Actually mine and my wife's Google phone. So the two USBs you see there are for the two tablets and these here are actually USBs as well but they have the adapter. I actually could have bought the the um, the proper adapt, not the adapter, but the proper um, USB. I forget what that, that little one's called. But anyway, it was just easier to, to put in the USB ports because then I figured I could use them for other things if I wanted to. So, um, anyway, I had taken this ATX power supply, which is actually a pretty nice one. I mean, if you look at the current capabilities, I um, have another one of these that I had built for me to use as a shop power supply where I used um, the um, 5 volt, <clears throat> the 3.3 and the 12 volt and I put a, a meter on, you know, a digital meter on it and such. You guys have all seen those. Anyway, and I also put a buck converter on it so that I could drop 12 volts down to 6.3 volts for my radios anyway that worked pretty well so my wife was like well can you build us something for our phones I was like sure so I had this one and um, I cut the slot in put the USBs in it uh, added the LEDs this one has the switch you know for turning it on and off um, the yellow light is the one I have for standby mode when this was on and then this switch turns on the red light which also turns on the charger well, it works fine for the tablets uh, on the 5 volt, but the Google phones and my iWatch, um, iPhone watch, don't want to work so well with it for some reason. Um, I was looking at the the phone and the um, watch, and the phone can charge up to 9 volts between 5 and 9 volts um, and apparently the 5 volts that I'm getting output on this is just not enough to trip it so I'm gonna add a buck converter to it tonight that's the plan anyway is to add a buck converter to the 12 volt line um, and reduce it down to 9 volts um, and see if it'll kick on when I do that so that's the plan. I'm going to get set up. So this is the buck converter that I'm planning on putting on. Um, I just got it on eBay cheap. Not much to it. It actually worked pretty good though. Like I said, I, I, I did get one. A little heat sink I'll stick on there too. I did get one that I, I used on um, the one I made for my shop. So. Don't be expecting too much when I get this apart because the night I threw this together, I was at uh, my sister-in-law's house with my wife. We'd gone to visit her, and um, they usually go down in the basement. Her sister's a quilter, and so she usually goes down there and messes around with her sister down there. And um, it's a pretty big basement, and she got actually a nice little area that. I can work so I, I usually try and throw together everything I think I might need for some special project that I'm going to do while I'm, we're there and um, so I had brought this a, this ATX power supply <clears throat> I had pre-cut the holes in the actual um, cover here to mount everything and uh, I kind of figured it out as I went. I had a little block of wood that I brought and see if I can get this over where you guys can kind of see what we got going on here. Um, <clears throat> lots of lots of hot glue mounting everything. Um, 
and uh, and I tied everything else back. So really, all I got to do is uh, get into my 12 volt um, here and cut a couple loose. And I'll put a couple in there, some splice them in there, um, and we'll see what we can get. So first thing I got to identify which ones I want to use as the as the two um, that we're gonna do. Right now it's this one and this one. It doesn't have to be that one and that one. I mean I can make it whichever ones I want. I think what I'm gonna do is make it the two center ones. That way it's just easier. I mean, it's easy to remember anyway because the, the things are in there. Um, I think we'll do that anyway that way it's symmetrical right got those two and then the two normals so all right I like things symmetrical so since it's those two figure out what wires we got here Let's see, this looks like my red wire here. For the one. Make sure I get the right one here. Lose it and lose sight of it. I'll leave enough on there that I can route it to the buck converter. Hopefully I got the right one here. And I'll cut the wrong one. Double look at it here just to make sure. I'm pretty sure it's. Oh, wait a second here. Let me take another look. Because of the way I got the glue going on here, I think it. I think. <clears throat> I think it's this one. Which is, I think, the one I just had. So that's the one we're going to go with. <clears throat> so let's unwind that out of there. <clears throat> There's that one. And then I want the other red one, for the other middle one, which Pretty sure is this one. Right here. <clears throat> Just snip that one off. Unwind it from where I had it wrapped. Assuming I got the right ones, there's my two power wires. Now the two I just cut off, <clears throat> right here and here, they're actually fine just the way they are, but I'll go ahead and put a little heat shrink on them uh, in a little bit. I'm going to do it right this second. Okay, so that's those. And now I gotta do the black wires. So this is the black wire for the one. It looks like it kind of got cut a little bit anyway, so I'm gonna um, go ahead and cut it right there, I think. I gotta splice it anyway. I think we'll cut it right there. Um, and then the other black wire is not that one. That one is that one, and this one is this one. Okay. So that's for that one. So we can cut that. All right, so now I got my positives and I got my negatives. Just gotta 
twist these together down here. All right. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and strip those and get them in the buck converter. Maybe. Maybe we'll get them in there. I don't know. We'll see here. See what we can do. I hope I'm in camera. I might not be in camera. I'm going to get around where I can hopefully be in camera. So let's get a bite on this one. And a bite on this one. <coughs> See if we can get these twisted together nicely. <clears throat> and then get my soldering iron turned on here. <clears throat> In the meantime, while that's heating up, I'll go ahead and twist up, strip and twist up my black wires. These ATX power supplies are pretty readily available on um, eBay. This one and the other one I got are were both brand spanking new. They're not um, takeoffs out of a computer. Although you could you certainly use a takeoff out of the computer. I actually have a couple that are takeoffs, but um, <clears throat> this one was brand new. I think I paid like twelve dollars plus free shipping. I think it was worth it. I mean, they're pretty nice, and and this one's like I said, it's got really good output on it. <clears throat> if you look at the amps that it's rated at, <clears throat> so I think it should work pretty good. Like I said, it it, it charges the tablets fine. <clears throat> it's like the the, the phones don't want to recognize it or something. So, I don't think that they're, I mean, I realize they're smartphones, but I, I don't think that they're so smart that they know if it's plugged into their charger. I mean, it's looking for a voltage. Um, and I could be wrong, because I don't, Everybody think I think I know everything because I don't. And when it comes to smartphones, I'm not the smartest guy in the world for smartphones. I actually was having problems on my YouTube channel the other day. I had to have my nephew Kenny from um, What Kenny Do. If you haven't checked out his site, check out What Kenny Do. It's my nephew Kenny. He's hilarious. Him and Breadstick are hilarious. That's a shout out. That's my shout, shout out to them. Okay, so those are soldered. Um, I think I'm gonna see if I got a piece of heat shrink I can stick on each of those just to kind of hold them together. Um, not that won't work or not. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work for the black. That'll work for the black and the red, I think. Cut a couple pieces of that off. All right, see if we can slide that on there. There we go, there's that one. There's that one. I've got my heat shrink tool, but I think I'm just gonna get lazy and melt them down with this. It shouldn't take much to hold it on there anyway. They're actually pretty snug going on there. Don't get it against your finger like I just did. It doesn't feel real good when you do that. <clears throat> I don't have 
be perfect. As you can see, the whole inside of this thing ain't perfect. But like I said, I threw it together and hey, if I can get it to work, that's just that much better. All right, I'm gonna shut my soldering iron off for a second. Place it somewhere where it doesn't melt something that shouldn't. Okay, so on our buck converter here, hold it where you can see it, we have the in positive, the in negative, and the out positive, and the out negative. So I'm going to hook these wires up to the out um, positive and negatives, <clears throat> and they're a cinch. They're just a cinch type situation. And um, so I'm going to see if I can get them to cinch in there. Let's see. So we want out positive for this one. I'll do this without stripping it out. I mean, there's, these things, are <clears throat> they're cheap enough that, you know, I think I paid four dollars for this one on eBay, and um, so they're not super robust, but the other ones seem to work pretty good. So I had bought a couple of them when I bought them, just so I didn't have to. I always try to get everything where it's free shipping too. All right, so those are in there. <clears throat> when I'm done, I'm just gonna glue this thing right to the right to the top of this thing right it'll clear everything because it's high enough it'll clear everything all right so that's there <clears throat> and so now I got to get my um, negatives over to it and my positives which the positives will be now the 12 volt <clears throat> negatives out there wouldn't have to necessarily use these exact same any of the blacks are negative so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, probably solder these two together and kind of like I did the, the other ones and run a single wire down to the actual buck converter <clears throat> so um, let me get a couple wires drug out of there. Okay, I did some stuff off camera, so I was trying to save some time so it didn't make this a super long video. Um, and I'll show you here what I did. So, if you rem remember, I originally had the little short um, red ones and the little short black ones. What I did was I took the two black ones and the two red ones and I shortened them up so that each one was different length so they couldn't short out. And then I put some heat shrink over them. <clears throat> the yellow was the 12 volt. So I had to take my, if you remember this was a big yellow bundle like that color right there, shrink wrap. I pulled that off. I got two long blacks out of my bundle of blacks that were still in there and two long yellows out of, out of the 12 volts that were in there. Once I got all that out, I tied everything back up, put this new big piece of heat shrink on there. I went ahead and heat shrunk this together. I was just going to do a piece down here, and then I was like, nah, I might as well bring it up a little bit, and I had a black piece, and then I was like, wait a second, I got a whole roll of this. Well, I wasn't going to cut all that off, so I went ahead and just finished it out with the, see, I had a short piece of this, and I had a long piece of this, so I went ahead and just did that. Yeah, it's kind of hokey, whatever. Um, I wish I would have had, had heat shrink on these, but I don't. So I'm going to put a couple tie wraps on here just to kind of bundle it together so no particular wire has really any more strain on it than another one, if that makes sense. And that way it makes the whole thing a little bit longer. Or longer. Makes the whole thing a little bit stronger is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, I can't talk tonight. Drove eight hours today, and 
my mind's not all there. All right, so I got that there. Let's put one more on there just for good measure. That way it kind of makes it sort of like a harness. I don't want to get the green one in there though. All right, there we go. All right, trim those off. And there we have it. All right. So the other thing I did was after I got these twisted together, I tinned them so they're ready to insert. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. And what I really should have done was put a piece of heat shrink over these so that it would take the stress, the strain off of the individual ones here. I can still do that. And I may still do that. I'll decide while I'm putting these on. Um, how I'm going to do it. So, again, the, the yellow is a 12 volt. This buck converter, we're going to knock it down to about 9 volts, maybe 8.9. Um, we got our N positive here, our N negative there. So, yellow is going to go on the one side. Get my hand out of the way. And get it in there. Assuming I can get it in there. There we go. And the black, I'm well, probably going to put them in the same time. Okay, let's try that. So get the black in. And get the yellow in. There we go. I think they're both in. And as far as they're going to go, they were, they were a little bit long. Well, maybe if I can get it tightened down before they pop out. Really should have had a smaller screwdriver, but again, I just kind of threw some stuff together. I knew I wanted to try and get this working. So there we go. I think we're in. Got to curve not to over tight because it will screw this up. Okay. So they're in. <clears throat> now. Oh, I wonder if I got a small enough screwdriver to turn my little screwdriver thingy bopper there. Uh, let me check and see if I got one. All right, let's see here. That's going to be small enough to turn that or not. Can't even hardly see it. Wow. I don't know if I can turn it or not. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in <clears throat> and just see if <clears throat> the, the buck converter is even any good and if it is maybe I can turn it with my big fat thumb or something so let's get the uh, plug plugged in and let's see plug my soldering iron because I don't think I'm going to need it anymore. And I can plug this cord in. Okay. And I probably should try and put something underneath that to insulate it so that it doesn't touch the metal case underneath it while I'm messing with it. All right, let's turn the power on. And if I can turn this so you guys can see it. You can probably see I've got the, the yellow lights on. Standby power. And yeah, okay. Now, let me go see, you see the red lights on here. Hopefully you can see that. Let me um, see if you guys are in focus. So you can see this buck converter. Yeah, you can see it. Unfortunately, because of the, the screen refresh on the phone, it's flashing. But take a word for it, it's reading 12.1 right at the moment. So I'm gonna see if I can turn it down with this, can't see it. Can't see what I'm doing with that doggone screw because it's so tiny. Maybe my razor blade slot can get in there. 
I gotta get a magnifier over there, guys, because I can't see it. Hold on a second. You probably don't see it in frame, which is good, but I got my magnifier here. I'll do this without shorting something out. I turned it. Now we're trying to adjust. Okay, I did get it. There it is. Now we're down to 11.6. Hopefully you're still on camera, but even if you are, I don't know if you can see it. So, I just hadn't turned it far enough. Let's see if I can get back in the slot. Well, the screwdriver just isn't fine enough to turn it. Down the 11, 5, 11, 4, 11, 3, 11, 2, 11, 1, 10, 8, 10 to 10.5, 10 10.4, 10 10.2. We're going to go to 9. Come on. Yeah, I lost my grip in my slot. Let's see here. Try it again. There we go. I think. Yep. 9.9, 9.8. 9.5, 9.4. I'm just going to take it to 9 even. Hopefully. Lost my slot again. Alright. There's 9 volts even. So now, let's see. Hmm. Alright, you're going to have to take my, take my word for it here for a second because I'm using my phone to pho photograph this, but I'm going to have to uh, plug it in to see if it actually works. So, give me a minute. i got to shut it off so I can, here, maybe if I turn this off you can see the 9. 9.0. The 9's, it's not, the O's not flashing. It looks like it is. It's just the resolution rate, like I said. So anyway, let me shut this off. I'm going to plug the phone into it and see if that port charges now. Okay. So the good news is I didn't fry my phone or my iWatch. The bad news is obviously the electronics in these are more sophisticated and smarter than I gave them credit for being because um, they wouldn't turn on. I had it at 9 volts and it wouldn't turn on. I, I turned it all the way down to 5 volts with it plugged in just to see if it would come on at any particular voltage and, and it won't. So I have to assume that it's a much smarter phone than I gave it credit for being. So, that being said, I'm not going to pull all that back out because there's too much work. I'm just going to leave it in there for now and at some point if I need my buck converter back then I will pull it out. But for now, I'm going to shut it off and unplug it. And I learned some today. Obviously, these um, phones are a lot more <clears throat> a lot more sophisticated than I gave them credit for being. Um, I need to isolate this buck converter from this chassis though before I glue it on there. So I think. I think what I need to do is just put some hot glue on the terminals, let that set, and then glue the thing down. So I think I'm going to do that right now. Let's put some hot glue on the terminals. So while I'm Disappointed that um, it didn't turn out better. Didn't turn out the way I was hoping it was going to. And I'm sure there'll be those of, that'll watch this and be like, "Well, you should have known that it wasn't going to work." No, I'm I'm old school, and a lot of stuff I try doesn't necessarily work. But 
sounds good, you know, in your head when you're thinking about it, and you're like, oh, that should work. Um, obviously, don't always work. And tonight was one of those nights that we found out it don't work. So, yeah, obviously the... Um, the phones are a lot smarter than I gave them credit for being. Which, again, it don't take much to prove me wrong about anything. So, it doesn't necessarily shock me that I was wrong. I wondered if I was going to be wrong or not. But, I figured I'd make a, a little film here too. A little movie to show you that, a little video, because a lot of times people only show you their stuff that works. They don't show you the stuff that don't work. And to be fair, I think that we need to kind of do both. All right, so now I want to sit this thing down on here, but I want to figure out a way I can do this and do this again. Move it over, so. Here. Now, the reason I'm leaving it in there and it's still not right is because I went ahead and obviously set it to 5 volts, which is what it needs to be for everything else. So, at least that way, I can still use it, just not with the, the ports I have on it. People, like I said, people would be like, yeah, you should have known that wasn't going to work. Yeah, I probably should have. I probably should have figured that out. But, hey, not out nothing to give it a shot, right? Just have to tell my wife that the phone was smarter than me, so this wouldn't work. Obviously, the tablets are dumb because the tablets have no problem firing up. And then we'll find out here in a minute if it's set good enough. Give it a minute to set, and I'll see if I can get this thing stabbed back down where it goes. Might be good enough for us to get that set in there. Let's see if we can get this to go down the way it's supposed to go down. Get you back in camera here. Take a look, see inside, make sure everything looks like it's still sticking okay. It does. Looks pretty good. Let's see if we get the screws in. <clears throat> I'll get the screws all in and find out something's not in, probably. Let's see if we get here and get that one in first. And that one looks okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stuff in my throat it tries to choke me up. I think we're in down here at the bottom on both sides. Yep, looks like it is. So we should be good to go here. And we'll see if it comes on properly. one. I'm going to get my tablet to make sure it still works with everything I did to it. <laughs> my luck is it won't work now. All right, let's plug it in. Flip it on. Yellow light's on. It's in standby. Nothing's running. You can hear that or not. You can see the fan, obviously. All right, so everything's on. So now I know my phone won't work, but let me go grab my tablet and one of my charge cords for it. All right, I think you guys can see that. 
So, I'm just going to plug my charge cord for my tablet. I guess I need to get over to the side where I can see what I'm doing. Like this. And I have another one. So might as well plug it in. Alright. Now let's get the tablet out and see if it comes on when I plug in. Gotta get the right direction. Man, they make this stuff so small I can't see it anymore. Guess that's right. Yep. Charging. I'll well, set it as soon as I plugged it in. Let's try it again. Charging. It says right down there. Okay. So that one's charging. Now let's try this one. Yep, charging. All right, now comes the real test. Let's see if I can get it to charge out of these two ports that I put the 12 volt and the buck converter on. So let's move it over here to this port. Let's see what we get. This working. All right, and might as well undo this one. Ah. Plug this one in. Yep, it's charging. All right, so buck converter is doing what it's supposed to do convert my 12 volts down to the 5.1 I put in there. I could probably crank it up a little bit more and get a little bit, not, not voltage wise, but a little bit voltage wise. But um, it's a fail for these. I mean, maybe the adapter's bad. I don't know. I doubt it though. I just think that it, it doesn't like that. I think the circuitry in the phone just does not like something that it does not recognize and it does not recognize this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my adapters back in there just so that I know that's what those are but I know I can pull them out and just charge a, a, a normal um, device with this obviously just not my Google Pixel or my Apple phone so I'm assuming it wouldn't charge my Apple not my Apple phone my Apple watch I'm assuming it wouldn't charge my Apple phone either but it was it was a nice experiment and uh, I'm cool with it I still have what I had before it's just that uh, my two ports before were working already anyway the way I had them um, but then I cut the wires and rewired it, so I was like, I'm not putting it back. So, buck converter's in there. If I decide I want to wire something in, else I could put a couple, you know, um, banana plugs up at the top or in a side or something and run the wires from the buck converter over to that, like I did um, on my power supply, one that I have in the shop. So, anyway, that's it. It wasn't a it wasn't a, a great outcome for what I was hoping for, but it still works and it's still a video for you guys to meander and think, God, this guy don't know what the hell he's doing. Make sure you read my uh, intro piece where it talks about I can make something, I can try and fix something. I can certainly make it worse than it was when I started. That's my motto. I can make it worse. If if, I, if it ain't broke, I can break it. Anyway, thank you for watching Greg's Vintage Workshop.